Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'd like to remind our colleague from North Carolina at the time Dodd-Frank passed, I believe the Senate had a 59 to 41 uh, advantage and the House had a 252 to 183. So I believe they could have passed anything that they would have liked. Mr. Kreminger, in your testimony, you say, given the absence of a non-bankruptcy uh, auction to prevent a disruptive collapse, government assistance was necessary to prevent the effects of these failures from cascading through the financial system, freezing financial markets, uh, and I'm assuming that's credit, and stopping the economy in its tracks. Is that not what's happened? I was describing, uh, Congressman, in my testimony that, uh, that we believe in the fall of 2008 that since there were no other options other than additional destabilizing and disrupting, disruptive bankruptcy proceedings involving the largest financial institutions, that without another option, the government assistance was necessary to prevent further and even more severe disruption of the financial markets. There's no question that the fall of 2008 was a very uh, dire time for the financial markets and the financial system as a whole. Um, did Lehman Brothers not go through uh, bankruptcy? Yes, it's in a bankruptcy proceeding today. Yeah, so it went, it was an orderly process. I don't know that I would, it was, it followed the bankruptcy code. It was a very disruptive process because even Alvarez and Marshall, who've been doing the liquidation, have testified that the bankruptcy process probably cost over $75 billion in, in losses that could have been recouped had there been the ability to, to continue some level of transactions in order to achieve a better value for the creditors. Uh, who who was those losses to? Who were those losses to? Those losses would be to all the creditors. The, to this date, there have been unsecured creditors in Lima who have not received a distribution. Okay. Um, now, as you might know, Georgia has had uh, 63 bank failures. Uh, and do you believe that the same government assistance should be extended to the, uh, by the FDIC to the community banks? And, and let me explain. When you talk about the uh, cascading through the financial system, it saved all the big banks. But when it got down to the small banks, it spread out and has caused more small banks to fail. So I guess too small to save. Um, and what has happened is that is real money that's sucked out of these communities. And what is being done to try to save uh, uh, some of these community banks rather than putting, you know, the pedal to the metal uh, and making them go faster? Uh, is there anything that the FDIC is doing uh, to look at these smaller institutions? Uh, well, Congressman, we certainly uh, participate with the Georgia Department of Financial Institutions in examinations of the state non-member banks and other regulators, of course, are the primary federal regulators for other types of banks in Georgia. Um, we, uh, we are not trying to accelerate the closings of, of banks. We certainly are trying to make sure we follow the law very scrupulously to, uh, if a bank is, uh, b goes below the critically undercapitalized level, then the statute requires us to give them 90 days to correct that, and if they can't, then they have to be closed. We certainly agree with you that it was unfortunate that uh, the largest institutions benefited from a level of support that the smaller institutions did not. Uh, that is, uh, was a demonstration of a long-held perception of too big to fail. Uh, that is why, however, that we think that we should never be put in a position again where we have, uh, don't have an option that will make sure we can close the largest institutions while making the shareholders and creditors bear the losses just as a small bank. Well, if this is the communities that's getting sucked out. And you, you know, you say that these- uh, Will the gentleman yield? Because I support your position completely. Sure. I, I, I support his uh, position completely. A, a, a great number of small institutions that are serving communities and are really the heart of these communities have been closed. So I, I would like the gentleman to consider asking the question uh, of is there any leeway on the 90 days? This is a financial crisis time and these smaller banks need a little more time to try to get the capital to keep their doors open. Is there any leeway to allow them past the 90 days if they don't meet your criteria to stay open? 
There is, well, my man, man, Yielding back. Yep. Yeah, there is certainly an opportunity uh, to extend the 90-day period if, it, if there can be a demonstration. Uh, and usually it'll be us working with the uh, state regulator, the state non-member, or the federal regulator if it's the federal regulator, to extend the period if there's a demonstration that this, there's a plan in place to provide the additional capital. Uh, I can assure you we've tried to work very closely with institutions to try to make sure they have an opportunity to raise capital, to do a private sector uh, merger and acquisition. and. I, I would just say from the FDIC's perspective, uh, we certainly are not eager to close banks. Uh, we certainly would, uh, would like to see the banks get recapitalized and continue on to serve those communities. I think there is a, a grave uh, a risk to the community banks in the United States. Uh, they unfortunately have a, you know, some have a substantial number of bad assets on their balance sheet, which is uh, making it impossible for them to merge uh, and avoid a failure. But uh, if I, I we certainly I agree with the one community banks to the U.S. financial system. Well, let me make just one brief comment. The reason they have some of these bad assets is because some of these banks that were given TARP money went in and did fire sales in these communities that undercut the values of these assets that these banks were holding. And with the mark to market, had to immediately write them down. This was no fault of their own. This was the fact that the government had given these big banks the money to go in, fire sale uh, 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 assets of these banks that they had taken over. These acquiring banks had plenty of money. They had the loss uh, share agreements that gave them no incentive to save those loans. And I'll tell you that I have counties in my district that do not have one community bank that used to have three banks. This is systemically significant to my district and to rural districts all across this country. And I hope that the FDIC will recognize this and try to do something with it to save some of these small lending institutions. And I yield back. Thank you. Mr. Meeks. Uh, 